this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Wake up. Time to die. Good morning, Angel. Good morning, Charlie. Yo, she bitch. Let's go. I'm on, Dad. You're so fast, too. Don't fuck with the babysitter. We came, we saw, we kicked it ass. Swing. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Bueller. You can dodge the wrench, you can dodge the ball. Oh, oh. What are you looking at, Spothead? Fucking Chuck Norris. Great Scott, my dog is heavy. You just gotta keep living, man. L I V I N. Cinema Royale. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? <sighs> Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Good evening and welcome to Cinema Royale, where we chew bubblegum and talk about movies. I'm your host, Mark Jenkins, and along with me is my esteemed, the wickedly awesome, Mia Bradzette. Wait, that's not right. (laughs) Yeah, thank you, Travolta. Hey guys, this is Animat. I'm also, well... Also known as Matt Brunet, as my real name, so <laughs> thank you, Mr. J. Jen- thank you, Mr. Jenkins. You're, you're welcome, you're welcome. Uh, yeah, we here are a week behind, of course, but of course we're talking about the Oscars this week. And just the two of us here, Matt and I, and uh, other two are kind of doing their own thing. We are just going to kind of react to the Oscars and kind of talk about the winners and shit. That wasn't formal. I've, technically, I well, technically I've already done my own. Um, uh, if you have seen in my channel, I've already done my own video regarding my thoughts on the Oscars plus the Annie Awards. So um, maybe after that, if you want, I guess if you want a more detailed of my thoughts, you could go check that out. You know, just for the sake of shame, shameless plugins. Yes, yes. I was going to put a link in the description below anyway, so you can click anytime you want to check it out. <clears throat> Ooh, thank you. Yeah, so Matt did talk about the Oscars uh, in his video. He talked about the always the animated stuff, and you know he could do like a recap for us. Okay, well, just the animated stuff, or like the complete Oscars thing. You can do the animated portion. Okay, so I'll start off with um, best animated short uh, since I. I still don't really know much, but uh, apparently the winner was uh, Mr. Hublet, a French animated feature. Apparently it's very imaginative. It even beat uh, Disney's Get a Horse, which was the animated short that appeared before Frozen. And also, for best animated feature film, the winner actually was Frozen, uh, which also won best original song for Let It Go. But the thing is, with an in terms of animation, it doesn't really stop there. There's also Despicable Me 2 that did accomplish a lot because it was nominated also for Best Animated Feature and also for Best Original Song for Happy with uh, freaking Pharrell and his giant Mountie hat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, I was really surprised when he, when he, when he still has that hat. I was like, D- like wh- why? It's like, dude, seriously? Like, I get that I have my signature orange fedora, but dude, like, you've just gone off over the top as hell. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> so, yeah, um, the funny thing about that hat is is that he actually, I think he sold it. He, he put it on, on, like, an auction or something. And I heard that Arby's bought oh, really? the hat. Ar- okay, yeah, well... I mean, that is their logo, you know? Exactly, so it's, it's so funny. A little random tidbit for you. <gasps> oh my god, but I will admit that after hearing, after hearing, like, Happy in Full of, um, at the Oscars, I will admit, like, the more you listen to it, the more, it's actually a pretty good song, I'll admit. It is. Yeah, definitely, because, like, the next day, I was just there, and I was like, I'm going on and check your time, and I'm going to happy time, feeling all happy, happy, happy. I 
was like, that's a pretty good song, ain't it? <laughs> like, damn. Yeah, it was actually a really good performance on the Oscars, and everybody got up and moved and danced because he's like, "Get up, let's move." Yeah, definitely. So Oddly the... enough, it's the only one where they got like da- like all dancers and stuff like that. The mm-hmm. rest, like "Ordinary Love," where it's just you two. Um, the Moon Song is just two guys and a guitar, mm-hmm. and uh, "Let It Go" was just uh, uh, it didn't. Um, uh, Idina Men- Menzel, I think. I hope that's the name. Yeah, and and apparently she was nervous as hell, and God bless her for singing that. No, it shows. It, no, it definitely shows. She like, I it shows, and I could definitely understand how she would be nervous. I mean, number one, it's the Godforsaken Oscars. Mm-hmm. Number two, you're in front of like. Like you're in front of the biggest stars in ho- in ho- in uh, cinema history. Number three, like millions upon millions of people are watching. And number four, Let It Go, like has become such a, like one of the biggest songs like in a long one of the biggest Disney songs in a long long time. Mm-hmm. So of course there's going to be there is so much pressure putting onto uh, to Menzel's. I I, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, like, bless her heart. Oh, yeah. Like, she, she did good. She may have missed that note, but still, like, she did a good job. Plus, she did, um, she did kind of, like, made it all, like, for the errors that she has done, she definitely more than made it all up with that, uh, Jimmy, Ki- I think it was Jimmy Kimmel or Jimmy Fallon, one of the Jimmies, and, um, like, she was with him and like his band was behind him yep. and they did a let, yep. they did let it go with uh, kindergarten instruments and that yep. was fun and that yeah. was fun to watch yeah that was uh i actually saw that it was jimmy fallon on the tonight show they did that with the roots yeah jimmy fallon and the roots yeah that was yeah that was pretty cool actually i saw that um yeah <laughs> i mean the whole Oscars in general, I just want to mention that uh, this year was hosted by Ellen DeGeneres. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, she was okay for the most part. She, nah. I mean... What what did she do? Let's be honest. What did she do? She barely did nothing. She just pretty much, uh, pretty much did her monologue and made fun of people. Like, Eliza Mandel. I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, let's be on. Yeah, like, here's the thing. I really, I really like Ellen. You know, like, like, fine, like, Dory is just plain awesome. There's no denying. And, like, whenever I would see her, sh- whenever I see, like, her show, she really is great. You know, she's great. You know, I really do like Ellen. And I actually do have high hopes for her in at the Oscars. But holy crap, she she barely did anything. She she literally did nothing. She just she tweeted and she ordered pizza. That's pretty much it. Mhm. Oh, yeah, tweeted and did the 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 selfie, the epic Oscar selfie that broke Twitter. Yeah. Apparently that was um Apparently that was all hope. That was actually an elaborate plan from Samsung, from what I've heard. Yeah, I was just gonna say about the whole Samsung sponsorship. Like, funny enough, I was um the day after the Oscars, I was watching this show. God, what was it? It was Inside Edition. They were talking about these mm-hmm. topics, and they're like, "Is Samsung the huge conspirator of everything going on in the Oscars?" Like, because she had the samsung phone in her hand she did it with the selfie but then behind the stage she used her iphone it's like really oh so there was like a yeah i mean that was kind of a big uh yeah if ellen uses an iphone but then like in the oscars she suddenly switches to samsung that's something's amiss yeah it was just like what really come on man yeah, that's kind of dumb. 
Plus the fact that um, I don't know if anyone has if um, I didn't mention this before, but I, I found out recently regarding uh, the controversy that they had to skip out a sketch that was supposed to be uh, I think it was a sketch or something like that that would have Andrew Garfield and uh, Bat Kid apparently, and that was completely canceled out. Huh. Did you hear about that? I don't think I have. That is something new to my ears. Really? But no, nah, but apparently like they like the bat you know who Bat Kid is, right? Mhm. Yeah, like he he was like he was preparing himself to like for that occasion, but apparently they just canceled it out. And um w- and bless Andrew Garfield, what he did is that actually he brought he brought ben- that kid and his family to Disneyland to like ca- kind of like recuperate, like kind of like make make up for that, like for not being at the Oscars. Hmm. Well, I'm reading I'm reading the Wikipedia page on here and about the Oscars, and apparently Andrew Garfield was listed as a presenter. And last minute, they switched out Andrew Garfield for Chris Evans. Oh, for, wait, uh, when did Chris Evans come out? He was the final presenter of the three hero segments. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, what did yeah. you think about the uh, hero seg? Yeah, what did you think about the hero segments? Yeah, it was just, I mean, yeah, the whole heroes montages, it just threw me off as like, that wasn't a theme. That wasn't. It's like what? I just threw me off completely. It's like they didn't do it last year, or the year before. It's like it must have been something new. And it's like okay, I, I like the montages. They were okay. I mean, I mean, of course, Jim Carrey introduced the animated heroes montage, and that was pretty funny. Yeah. No, but like that was the weird thing. Like when I first heard that, and I saw Jim like. Jim Carrey was, you know, I'll admit, Jim Carrey was pretty cool when he presented. But then, like, they show the animation segment, and I thought, like, directly afterwards, they're going to announce, like, the num- the the winners for Best Animated Short and uh, Best an- Animated Feature Film. But no, it, it segues into uh, Happy. Yep. Like, yeah. Like, it, it's Pharrell coming out and singing Happy. And, mm-hmm. like, I didn't really get it. Uh, yeah, I did not get but, that like, either. No, but they played like the um they played the the like they did themes before. I think they did themes before. Like Ellen practically didn't do I th- I think like Ellen or the Oscars in general didn't really do anything. It it feels like the purpose of of like the heroes is just filler. Like uh, oh yeah. like, these movies. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's... It makes no it's like it's it's just filler. To, it's like it's just something to fill in time, like during the Oscars, because they can't just present them. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and the funny thing is, they brought Ellen back because she did host it back in two thousand seven Oscars. Mm-hmm. And I don't. Mm, and I remember. I. I don't remember that. Uh, I don't. What? I don't remember the two thousand seven Oscars. To see the comparison between back then and now for Ellen's hosting abilities. I remember. I remember when she she did host um back she did host one. I remember. I I think I don't remember a lot, but I did know that she did a much better job job then than she did now because my God, like there was barely anything. Like I I mentioned this in my video that. You remember last year when Seth MacFarlane was the host? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, like, the thing is, is that, you know, a lot of people have mixed feelings regarding Seth MacFarlane, mostly because he's the creator of Family Guy and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. There's one thing you gotta admit. At least he, he made, he's making the Oscars a show. At least he's putting on a show for, like, at the Oscars. Yeah, that was like yeah. Like that's doing something. Mhm. Yeah, just it's very memorable to say the least. 
like this just feels like I I feel like maybe Ellen was Ellen wasn't ready for the Oscars. Yeah. She was unprepared. What from what I understood, but, like that's the thing. Like they haven't rehearsed at all, so it was all a prop two when they did the Oscars. Ah. Uh... So she was on she was on the ball with it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the thing. Like, wh- if you're gonna just gonna tweet and order pizza and just make selfies, like, what? Like, this is something you can do it during the um, during the Golden Globes because why not? No one cares about the Golden Globes, but not at the Oscars. I mean, this is literally the the, the highest honor in uh, uh, of, of movies, and literally, you're just, it's like. You're just treating it like nothing's happening. It's just a, ga- a big gathering of celebrities just because it's a party. Yeah, so one of the biggest, biggest winners of the Oscars, the one that got seven awards of the night, was Gravity. Yes. Yes. Uh, you know, I-, I was honestly surprised. Um, I-, I was so surprised Gravity didn't even win... Um, best picture because like because the thing is is that i always consider like during that night i consider um i consider gravity like the technical king pretty much Mm -hmm. because like it won it won all the uh technical aspects pretty much like best visual effects sound mixing sound editing uh uh, let me see now it won um film editing and cinematography and then suddenly, it also won Best Original Score and Best Directing. Mm-hmm. That, like... Like, uh, honestly, I-, I was seriously expecting that f- that it would win. Because, like, normally, I usually think that, well, of course, that, like, the more Oscars you have, the more chances you're going to win, like, Best Picture and stuff like that. Because, like, literally, gra- Gravity took everything and, like... Mm-hmm. I understand. I saw the movie. It was really awesome, but um, I'm not saying like Gravity doesn't deserve all of them, but it definitely does. Um, like it, it most certainly does. But like I didn't expect the amount it would win without even winning Best Picture. Yeah, it kind of threw me off there. You saw Gravity, right? Uh let's say no. Let. Uh... I would be honest. I'll I'll be honest. I'll be honest. The only movie that got nominees that I've watched was American Hustle. And that didn't win shit. (laughs) Wait, what? You didn't like it? No, no. Actually, I enjoyed American Hustle. American Hustle was actually a really good movie. But it didn't win nothing at the Oscars, even though it was nominated so many times. Oh, that's true, yeah. Because... Oh, yeah, that is so true. It it won jack all. Nothing. Like, it was nominated for Best Picture. It was nominated Best Actor with Christian Bale, which, uh, you gotta admire Christian Bale, because he's been doing a lot with his acting. Like, uh, in the past, he's like lost a lot of weight mm-hmm. to skin, like bone skinny, and then this one, he actually gained weight to be like fat. He was pretty. Oh, dude. Yeah, he was like he, you could see his you see his belly pretty much the whole movie. You know, he's fat, and I mean, you give him chops for that. I mean, that's dedication to the role. Oh yeah. Um, best actress had Amy Adams. She was pretty good. Um. Then Jennifer Lawrence as um, as Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> oh, don't we get started on Jennifer Lawrence? Oh my God, that! Oh my God, her role in American Hustle is just hilarious because she's this um this mother. She has she has a kid, and mm-hmm. one in one scene in the movie, um, Christian Bale gives because Christian Bale and Jennifer Lawrence are married in the movie. Just so you know. Mm-hmm. And there's a scene where Christian Bale gets a microwave. It's a new, innovative thing. And she gives it to Jennifer Lawrence. And she's like, oh, look at the science box. 
and she doesn't read the instructions. She puts aluminum foil in microwave, and it goes boom, and she explodes it right away. I broke the science box, oh, honey. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my Jesus. Oh, my God. That that does not sound like Katniss Everdeen, that's for sure. But, yeah, I mean, Jennifer Lawrence didn't get uh, her second Best Supporting Actress award. She would have got it. Well, two... she got it last year, so. I, I know, but it would have been nice to get it two years in a row. Um uh best... there's also uh best costume design best production design directing yeah it was uh let's see oh film editing it was all there it was a really original good original screenplay yeah the funny thing is american hustle and gravity had the same amount of nominees and gravity took most of them <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. It's like, yeah, they both had ten nominees, and all of a sudden, Gravity was the best. Except for uh, the <laughs> picture. Um, yeah, Gravity Gravity pretty much took everything for themselves, except for Sandra Bullock. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, man. You know, I, I remember when I was watching uh, the awards with my parents, my mom looked at me and, like, when, like, I think by the fifth or sixth award it won, my mom told me that, like, you know, I think there, there at this point there's a lot of pressure for Sandra Bullock. Because of all the freaking Oscars that it got, you'd think that she would join into the crowd and get, and get it for her, perform- her performance in Gravity. Since she, other than George Clooney, she's practically the only actress in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course, she didn't get nominated for, you know, best... Oh, never mind. <laughs> no, she did, but yeah, she, she didn't did. win. She didn't win. Exactly. Um, uh, what else? Uh, well, the one of the biggest surprises that I have noticed is Best Actor was won by Matthew McConaughey. And I can cannot imagine... Oh, yeah, definitely. I could not imagine Matthew McConaughey winning Best Actor. I'm like... Really? This is the guy who says, all right, all right, and <laughs> dazed and confused. Yeah, pretty much. Mr. All right, all right, just got himself an award. So, yeah. I don't and, think anybody saw that day. No, no, yeah, everybody was... And then uh, his co-star, uh, Jared Leto, also got Best Supporting Actor Award. So, back-to-back, those guys got some good awards. I have to go check out. Yeah, like, I'll be honest, I I haven't seen uh, Dallas Buyers Club, but the moment I saw the clip uh, for, uh, like, that clip every time they show for Best Actor, like, for Best Actor or Actress when they show that little clip of their performance, Mm -hmm. when I saw what Jay Leto did, like, when he was that transvestite, like, I was there, I was like, holy crap. Yeah. Yeah, I should have picked him. Holy crap. Like yeah, he, he was really. Oh yeah, he was. He was really. He he was really good. He was. He was, and it actually compelled me to actually go get the movie for me to watch. Which I'm, mm-hmm. not, which I'm totally gonna do. Um. What else was? Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Do you want to go ahead to uh, Twelve Years a Slave? I was gonna say that the other winner of the Oscars was Twelve Years a Slave, who won Best Picture. Best Supporting Actress, and Best Writing for Adapted Screenplay. Mm -hmm. And And that's it, oddly enough. Yeah, it's only won three, and I'm like, must be a powerful movie. It's all about slavery. Yeah. (laughs) It's like, I'll I'll admit, it's like what Ellen DeGeneres says. Like, if if the winner, like, well, if the winner is... If the winner is um, 12 Years a Slave, then congratulations to all the filmmakers. If the winner is anything else but 12 Years a Slave, then we're all racists. <laughs> okay. I mean, give her credit. Like, that, there were some was, good moments with Ellen. There, was, there, 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 are, was, there were some funny moments with Ellen. There were some funny moments, yeah. Yeah. Um, I heard a rumor yeah, that but, the uh, Oscar committee didn't even watch 12 Years a Slave. 
there was like that's impossible because I was just reading some random stuff and all of a sudden it's like oh uh, the Oscar Academy did not watch Twelve Years a Slave even though they nominated it for three awards I'm like that can't be real that's false no that can't be real. Yo, that's not true. That wouldn't be the. Uh, that wouldn't be them. They would have just. That wouldn't be them. I mean, that would be like. It's like they like. That would only be true if they looked at the Golden Globes and they were like, "That's our winner. That's our winner right there." But we haven't seen it. No, 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 no. That's our winner. Exactly. Um... No, but I'm honestly surprised that like. I'm not really surprised that 12 Years a Slave actually won, be- considering that it did win Golden Globe for Best uh, Drama Motion Picture, I think. Yes. But the thing is, is that with... I, I, th- I was expecting a lot more. Like, sure, it got, like, Best Original Screenplay... No, Best Adapted Screenplay, and it also got Best Supporting Actress, but, like, I was expecting a little bit more from, like, the bigger ones... Like, I was mm-hmm. expecting it was also going to get, like, best directing and best actor in a leading mo- role. Like, I thought it was going to get a few more, but, like, but no, like, I, I didn't know, like, I would never expect that, like, the winner of best picture would only end up just getting three, while everything else would mostly just be from, like, be- from, like, Gravity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was totally surprised about that. Um... As Matt said before, Frozen won two Academy Awards, and the, yes, and along with um, Frozen, another one that won two <laughs> awards was um, The Great Gatsby, which I was like, really? That's those were that movie was nominated for Best Costume Design and the Best Production Design. I'm like, where did that come from? It came out of nowhere and came out of left field in my opinion it's like that should have been more than that Mm -hmm. even though i haven't seen the film it just it was a like a wild card thing for me well pretty much i haven't seen the film but i have heard a lot about it since it is directed by baz lerman it's uh it's pretty much a lot like uh have you seen any of his other works like moulin rouge or something like that Mm -hmm. yeah and of course leo dicaprio was uh nominated for quite a bit you know, he he, he didn't, yeah. he got snubbed like, out of so, this ox. Yeah, so. <laughs> Boy, you should. Yeah, write down in the comments your favorite, your favorite meme of Leonardo DiCaprio not getting an Oscar. Thanks. I was just going to say that. Because <laughs> yeah, those were everywhere afterwards. It's like, oh, Leo DiCaprio didn't win an Oscar. Oh. No, they were there before. Like they were there for a while. I think ever since Leo was nominated, like when when the nominations were announced, like those those awards kept popping up. Mm, probably, but I'd like have, it's I'd... kind of weird considering that. Why are we just targeting Leo when like like we can also do the same thing to like what like Johnny Depp? I guess. <laughs> I guess. I mean, yeah, he's good in movies. Um, well, I mean, like Johnny Depp, like Johnny Depp did get a lot of Oscar nominations, but he didn't win one. So, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the best actress threw me off. It was like Kate Blanchett from Blue Jasmine. It's like there was other. I mean, Sandra Bullock could have won. Gra- could have won for Gravity, but damn. <laughs> I honestly don't know. I've never seen Blue Jasmine. Or if I can be honest, I'm not 100% sure if I've seen any Woody Allen film. So, like, I'm not really going to deny it. But, like, I don't know. It is kind of a weird choice. Because I think that's the only win for Blue Jasmine, actually. Because other than original screenplay, I don't think it's... Is it nominated for anything else? No, I, I don't think so, actually. No, well, okay, best actress in a supporting role, but yeah, yep, yeah, only uh, only three, three nominees, three nominees, three nominees. Yeah, like, 
But yeah, it's like yeah, it is kind of weird. Yeah, it was just that's the one they won. Um, by the way, there's something I want to ask you. Sure. Um, what are your thoughts on possibly the weirdest nom, the weirdest list of nominations? Best makeup and hairstyling. Yes. Which, um, I was, of course, I was, Dallas Buyers Club won. But then it has the wild cards of the Lone Ranger and Jackass Presents Bad Grandpa. I was just going to mention that next. I was just looking at it. I was like, yes. Best makeup and ha- hairstyling was Dallas Buyers Club, Jackass Presents Bad Grandpa, and the Lone Ranger. And, of course, the Lone Ranger had a couple un- <laughs> nominees, which <laughs> sorry. It just made me laugh. It's like, really? That yeah. movie tanked and, yeah. at the box office so bad it got a couple nominees. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, um, it's like, it's pretty much last year. Yeah, it was last year's John Carter, pretty much. Uh-huh. Which is which is coincidental, considering it's also from Disney. Mm-hmm. And, like, the thing, it, it gets visual effects and makeup. Mm-hmm. Although I will admit... Although I, I will admit, sometimes in makeup, you do see, like, the weird, like, it's possibly home to some of the most unexpected and weirdest, like, movies you could ever put in there. I think, I'm not 100% sure. I know that Norbit actually got nominated. Let me just check a second. I think, like, Adam Sattler's Click got nominated as well? I think... Yes, 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 yes. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Click got nominated as well. So, like... Oh, my God. It's kind of weird. Yeah. No, but, like, I remember one of the best... Um, one of the best tweets I've seen are actually from people who mentioned, like, how would you feel if you live in a world where a jackass movie won an Oscar? Yeah, that would have been totally different. I mean, oh my god! I mean, yeah, I was, um, yeah, I was, I was watching Johnny Knoxville. He was uh, promoting his film throughout, you know, when it was out, and you know, he was on talk shows, and he was on, fuck, what was it? I think Late Night with Jimmy Fallon before the Tonight Show, and he talked about how his movie got nominated for best makeup and hairstyling, and they were talking about how. You know, this makeup was really good because, you know, they had to make Johnny Knoxville look like a grandpa. And then people were fooled by it because nobody recognizes him as Johnny Knoxville in the movie. So I give him props Mm -hmm. for that. I mean, that would have been pretty surprising if it actually won the Oscar for that category. Oh, God. I think I laugh. I think I would laugh so hard. I, I would just laugh and laugh just because... Jack, like just because, like I, I just continuously write Jackass won an Oscar <laughs> because we are, we are now in a world where Jackass has an Oscar. Mm-hmm. What to do now? <laughs> exactly. What's what's next on the plate? Oh, uh, <laughs> no, but how did did you see uh, Lone Ranger? By the way, no. No, no, me neither. My parents actually really liked it. That's... They they told they keep on convincing me to watch it because it's uh, it's practically pirates. It's Western Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> That's uh, what they keep telling me. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I heard a lot of bad things about it. Yeah, I've heard it's like ridiculously violent. Oddly enough, so like. I mean, yeah, I heard about production too with the Lone Ranger. I heard, I don't know. I heard that um, during shooting, you know, I think Johnny Depp was in like this accident where he was on a horse and he fell off the horse and the horse almost trampled him. Oh yeah, I heard he fell. I think he, I, I probably heard he fell off the horse, but I didn't hear, hear it about that part. Yeah, he was like, he was like almost got trampled by the horse. Um. Oddly enough, the weirdest movie that got nominated, in my opinion, is Her by Spike Jones. You were surprised about that? That's just the weirdest movie 
ever and it got best writing which i give him credit because you know it's a love story about a man and his phone (laughs) well i mean it is an interesting concept it's weird but it, it it definitely sounds interesting because it's like it does question a lot about like our modern society and modern technology as well. Like I kind of get where it's trying to go with it and all the metaphors and stuff like that. So like, I think it's like an experiment gone right per se, because like after all the Oscar stuff that happened, like I experiment gone right. Yeah. Other than that, just not very fond. Pedo mustache man falling in love with a scar. Joe Hans. Yeah. Um. What the hell? Uh. Just trying to. So, what did you think about the Wizard of Oz tribute? Oh, the Wizard of Oz tribute. Oh, yeah. Honestly, that came out of left field for me, because the thing is, is that I it starts out with Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg describing like the Wizard of Oz and stuff, and like I was so confused and all that stuff. But then like I I did not know what was happening. But then suddenly on Twitter they were pretty much replying to me back. It was like it's because it's the seventy fifth anniversary. I was like, oh, why didn't they say that in the first place? They uh they expect you to know that. Not Oprah, uh, Whoopi Goldberg. Did they? I don't think they mentioned it, but you know, I guess they were like, "Hey, dumbass, his seventy fifth anniversary of Wizard of Oz, don't you know?" Um, but yeah, and then Pink. Okay, they kind of forget. Yeah. Yeah, Pink did the. Um. Yeah, I, I don't really mind her performance that much. It's not the best version of uh, Somewhere Over the Rainbow, but like it's kind of like trying to make it a bit modern, per se. But other than that, it's meh. It's, it's nice, I guess. Uh, I guess. I guess it was. Oh, Bill Murray and What's-Her-Face. Oh, yeah. Bill Murray and Amy Adams were yeah, Bill presenting... Murray was, uh, uh, they were presenting the uh, best cinematography, and <laughs> before they opened the envelope, Bill Murray mentioned, and Harold Ramis for Caddyshack, <laughs> Ghostbusters, and Animal Ghostbusters. House. <laughs> it was kind of funny. How oh, he, yeah. I, I was like, that's a nice touch of Bill Murray. That's a nice tribute to him. Yeah. Yeah, that really is. That really is a nice touch. I really am happy that he did that. It was a, it was a nice tribute for for an old friend of his. I I I really am happy with what he did. It was really I, good. I think it's like a really fitting thing. It was. Mm-hmm. Other than that, God, is there anything else you want to talk about? Um. Well, other than that, there is um there is one thing I want to mention that. Um, we experience a very th- that uh, the Oscars did had a very rare mo- moment where um, for be- for Let It Go, um, Robert and Kristen Anderson Lopez were one of the very few people in the world to get the EGOT, which is uh, they managed to get an Emmy, an a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. Not all for the same. Not all for the same work, but it's um, they. They actually like throughout their lifetime and works like they got that. So, so yeah, pretty much. Have you ever heard of the EGOT before? I think I've heard you mention that before. Yeah. 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 yeah in my okay. Yeah, in my video. Yeah. But, <laughs> exactly. Otherwise, outside of your video, and now, no, I have not heard of the EGOT. Mm-hmm. Same here, actually, but like that that does sound like a pretty that sounds like a pretty big goal to have, you know. But it is. like that's a pretty big thing because it, I think there's only twelve people in the world who has that. Oh. So take this 
So yeah, like, I mean, it's pretty much Emmy, Emmy, Oscar, Grammy, Tony. It's not every day like people would go like into all the fields, like in the field of music, in the field of television, in the field of movies, and in the field of Broadway, like all in the same career. Yeah, um... and I will get, and I will. And I will admit, as a songwriter, it is easy to go into that. Like, the people who do music, it, it, it's kind of easy to go into any, like, entertainment medium and do that. Yeah. Um, there's another, here's another and, fact for you. Um, Jared Lento, who did win the Best Supporting Actor Award, he already dented his Oscar. He, dented his Oscar? He fell down the stairs. What do you mean dented? <laughs> he fell down the stairs and nicked his Oscars, and it's got like a big dent in the in the statue. Oh my god, really? Mm-hmm. Dude. <laughs> I, was, I was laughing when I heard that. I was like, oh my god, really, dude? You freaking nicked your Oscar? It's got a dent in it? Oh my All god. All I can imagine now is just Jared Leto... As a little kid running with ice cream, and then suddenly he fell. Then he looked up, and then his Oscar got dead. <laughs> um, I mean, why would you? Well, how? Like you think after you got an Oscar, you'd be careful with that crap? Exactly. Um, yeah, if, if I fell down, down a bunch of stairs with an Oscar, like I'm, pr- I'm going to c- protect it. Like it's a freaking child. It's like, I will not hurt you. <laughs> ow, ow. I was like, are you all right? My Oscar is. <laughs> yeah. And another thing to note is that this is the second year in a row where Jennifer Lawrence fell. <laughs> oh Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I think that's one of my favorite moments with uh, Ellen. She actually mentioned, like, mm-hmm. um, like she actually really used that well. It's like, oh, by the way, Jennifer Jennifer Lawrence is here with us. Oh, and, uh, oh, don't worry, Jen. I, I won't tell you that you fell. All right? I'm not going to tell anyone that you fell. All right, I, I'm just going to say it. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence fell last year. Uh, we actually, we got a clip of that. No, I'm not going to show you. No, no, I'm just kidding. Actually, no, I'm not kidding. Let's see. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's kind of funny that, like, she even did fall down, like, just recent. It's, um, just, uh, like, recent, like, it, this year's Oscars as well. Yeah, it was just weird because, yeah, it, it was on the red carpet, you know. You tripped over a traffic cone. <laughs> yeah. You know, the weirdest thing about that is that uh, the first time I heard, the first time I heard that, was actually on Twitter at the official Disney news. Oddly enough, like they would post like all the latest news of what's going on with the Disney company. And then here I saw an, like uh, here I saw Di- the Disney news just going, OMG, Jennifer Lawrence fell. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. You wouldn't expect that from a Twitter that's dedicated to Disney. No. Oh no, God. and this is like the official Disney thing. I was like, uh, Disney? Y- you okay? <laughs> um, you don't you don't sound so good. Oh, Disney, go home, you're drunk. Yes. Go home, Disney, you're drunk. Oh my god. Um <laughs> And then is I, I can imagine next time it's like, next time something like that happens. It's like breaking news. Zom, zom, Elsa looks so perf. Um, but I learned a lot of new things about the Oscars. I mean, of course, if the actors or actresses or anybody want to sell their Oscars back to the Academy, they have to sell it for a dollar for them to buy it back. Wait, just a dollar? Yeah, apparently, yeah. If you if they want to sell their Oscars for some odd reason, I don't know why, the Academy they would have to sell it for a dollar and they buy it from them, which is the weirdest thing. Um, the other thing which was pretty awesome was 
Uh, you ever notice that when they show the actors on screen, you never see them go to yeah. the bathroom. Oh yeah, yeah. So so what oh, they is it, is it during the commercial break? Probably, but when they uh, when they uh, show the the whole room, there's people sitting in their seats. Yeah. And they get paid to sit in their seats. Oh, they're like filler. Yeah, they're, they're they're fillers. They fill the seats as they go to the bathroom. They get paid just to sit in that seat for the whole Oscars when they go to the bathroom. Wow, that's like the best job ever. I it, want that. It is. It is. I was like, are you kidding me? I want to sit at the Oscars. <laughs> just so like, it's like, dude, you get paid to sit down at the Oscars. Like waiting for a celebrity while you sit next to a celebrity. Like how awesome is that? Exactly. It's like the best thing ever. Oh, hey, Brad. Hey, Angelina. Don't mind me. Kevin Spacey is out to pee. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, man. Loved you in Inglorious Bastards, by the way. <laughs> Oh, hey, Brad. Hey, Angelina. I like to you and Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Yep, that was pretty good. You two went very well. Yep, yep. Oh, 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 I got to go now. Kevin Spacey's coming back. See ya. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. Apparently, I don't know why I'm the one who is set as an example, but then I have to be the guy just to, just to be replaced by some idiot who wants to talk to Brad and Angelina. Oh, oh maybe for their own safety, I need to change. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Um, you ever go to the website BuzzFeed? I think a few times. So I, 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 it sounds familiar. They often do these videos, and they did like a video of um, interviewing uh, celebrities, and they got to ask uh, Kevin Spacey. All these feminine uh, Oscar questions, like "Who are you wearing?" and "What time did you get uh, up?" Yeah, yeah. All those questions. So he's getting these questions, and all of a sudden, uh, they ask, "Who who does your manicure?" And it's like, "What manicure? What manicure?" And and Kevin Spacey tells BuzzFeed, "You guys are the fuckest, fucking weirdest people I ever seen in my life." Just, you guys are fucking weird. Oh my god. Oh my god. It was Wait, is it like the real Kevin Spacey? Like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Actually happened or? Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. Oh, Dude. it's like it's hilarious. Just freaking goes off. Oh man, best video Buzzfeed ever produced. Oh man. But, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. You gotta have that one idiot who is able to be dumb enough to actually go to the Oscars and do that. Exactly, exactly. Um, so here's here's a question that I want to ask: Who do you think should host the Oscars next year? Oh my God, that's a good question. But let's be honest: you never know who who's going to be next. I mean, I honestly don't know. Um, you know, just seeing from the Oscars of this year, I would love to see, like, of course there's like Billy Crystal would be awesome to come back, but I would like to see either Jim Carrey or Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg. Judging from like how they did this year, like wh when they presented, mm -hmm. they would be awesome. Like if they actually like hosted an entire Oscars. Yeah. <laughs> It was kind of funny. I was reading comments. What about you? Reading comments about that, and a lot of people mm -hmm. are were uh, asking for Kevin Spacey to host the Oscars. Oh my God! Yes. <laughs> he, he, because when he presented, and then when he was talking, I was like, "Oh my God, that'd be awesome! He would just be like the best." Well, of course, all the House of Cards fans would really want that. They want the freaking, <laughs> they want freaking Frank to come up. Like, well, well, it's time for my break in Washington, and now it's time for me to present the Oscars. That was nice. Oh, my God. 
It was just in character. Oh my gosh, that was freaking hilarious. Um, oh my god, what about you? What do you think? Who do you want to see? Uh, damn it, damn it. I'm sorry. Sorry. Damn it, damn it. Damn, damn. <laughs> Um, personally, yeah, I'm becoming the alien guy from. Oh, go on. Personally, you know, since um, I'm a huge fan of Jimmy Fallon when he started the Tonight Show, and it would be awesome for him since he's is the new Tonight Show host. He would do the hosting of the Oscars because that would make him uh, uh, a huge honor for him in general. Because you know he's pretty funny. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> Yeah. Um, th- I can definitely see that happen. I don't think now, but like definitely maybe for like the 2016 or 2017 Oscars. Probably. Like when he has de- like fully settled in the uh, when he fully settled in the Tonight Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, that was another one I was thinking of, and I couldn't think of who. Here's a funny thing. Before Seth MacFarlane was supposed to host last year's uh, Oscars, yeah. the rumored host that was supposed to host the Oscars was Eddie Murphy. I think I heard that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause it was, yeah, because I heard that Eddie Murphy was going to host with Brett Ratner producing the Oscars. And I was like, uh, okay, that would be... Brett diff- Ratner? Who? He has done the films of Rush Hour, um, Rush Hour 2. Oh. You know, that Joker. Okay, that guy. Yeah. Because Eddie Murphy oh God, and... What's that guy in? Yeah. 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 Um, I may, I don't know. I honestly don't know because, like, it's been a long – because, like, Eddie Murphy has been out of the picture for, like, a long, long time. I, I, and, like, I know, I know. He has – yeah, the thing is, is that he has pretty much disappeared. I – like, uh, I thought I heard something. I don't know. Anyways. No, but anyways, like, like, he has been out of the picture, like, after, like, bad film after bad film after bad film. You know, and, like, if I, you know, personally – the only, let, let's just say uh, the reason why for uh, for his pretty much his big downfall is uh, 999 spirits and ghosts. Let's. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. Other than that, I think we've covered pretty much everything we need to know about the Oscars and this year's Oscars as well. Yes. Yes, yes. Um, so I just figure I wanted to do that. It was a pretty cool thing to do, watch it and then react to it kind of thing. Even though I only seen one out yeah. of the ten best pictures. <laughs> oh, man. Um, <laughs> Same here, actually. I think I only saw Gravity. <laughs> no, I think it's one of nine, actually. Was it? Oh, yeah, it is nine, yeah. I, I, I thought it was ten for some reason. <laughs> Um, nah. Well, they usually do ten, but like this year they just did nine. Nine. Um, yeah. So let's see what gets nominated for next year's Oscars, and hopefully we get a cool host to do it next year. Yeah. Let's hope. Uh, let's hope things. Well, I'm not. So... Ellen. Is... Ellen is cool, but let's hope like the Oscars are better next year. That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, so next time on Cinema Royale, the topic is all about Dr. Seuss and his books, stories being adapted into films since his birthday was on Oscar Day, March 2nd. So it'd be a nice tribute to uh, him. Yes, 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 yes. So we'll talk about the four films that I'm aware of. I think it's The Grinch, Can the Hat, Horton Here's a Who, and The Lorax, and The Impeccable Future of Future Seussical Films. 
the, the future of animated Susical few films, actually. Yes. Uh, no, seriously. Yes. It's not a bright future. Well, if it's the people who made Despicable Me, I would think they would be doing okay. But... Yeah, but did you see the Lorax? No. But let's save that for later. No, let's save that for later. With that, I'm Mike... No, no, wait, I'm not Mike, I'm Mark. I'm Mark Jenkins. <laughs> Screw that, I'm Mark yeah. Jenkins tonight. <laughs> uh, this has been Cinema Royale, and we'll see you in the and next... Me, and this is Mia Brennett. <laughs> Mia Brennett. <laughs> I fucking love that John Fruitafolta will say your name as Mia. <laughs> You're not a girl. <laughs> That's what you know. <laughs> With that, you big bad boys, I'm gonna say good night, and I'm <laughs> going to watch Dallas Buyers Club. Come join me afterwards. Ooh la la. Actually, no. <laughs>